At this time, uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order. If you please stand, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. And I'm going to ask uh, Chief Baker to give us some questions. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm going to ask uh, Councilman Negashev to lead us in a special prayer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, this is a Hindu prayer that was supplied by Rajin Zed. <clears throat> we mediate on the transcendental glory of the Deity Supreme, who is inside the heart of the earth, inside the life of the sky, and inside the soul of the heaven. May he stimulate and illuminate our minds. Lead me from the unreal to the real. Lead me from the darkness to the light. Lead me from death to immortality. Strive constantly to serve the welfare of the world by devotion to selfless, one attains the supreme goal of life. Do your work with the welfare of others always in mind. May we be protected together. May we be nourished together. May we work together with great vigor May our study be enlightening, and may no obstacle arise between us. United your resolve, united your hearts, may your spirits be at one, that you may long together dwell in unity and concord. Peace, peace, peace be unto all. Thank you, Councilman. Nicely done. Chinese, Botello, Skazavava, Taishos. Three. President, three absent. Let the record reflect the following. Councilman Riley is on family business. Um, Councilman, uh, I was going to make an announcement a little later, but Councilman, Councilman Skazavava is ill. Uh, he was in the hospital this weekend, so we pray for his speedy recovery. It doesn't look like it's anything. Um, Life threatening, but it, you know, it looks like he's going to be okay. Um, but he's got a little bit of a recovery period. And um, Councilman Taylor is, is also not feeling well. And, and we uh, love to have a microphone so it doesn't work. But having said that, um, he uh, is also on the bend uh, and is currently on medication. Uh, so we welcome him back at the July meeting. So Councilman Taylor, Councilman Scott's father was sick, Councilman Riley's on the bend. First 30 minutes of each council meeting are reserved for public speaking. If there's any member of the audience that wishes to address the council this evening, you must do about an item that is specifically on the agenda. And you must be a resident and or a taxpayer of the city of Danbury. This time, there's any member of the public that wishes to address the council. Dr. Weinstein, I see you moving, so come on up. You'll be up to nominate. I'm well, what the agenda is. I was told to show up. Your item's on the agenda. Okay, great. <laughs> That's too soft. Wait, can everyone hear me? No, you got to speak in the microphone because we're recording. I'm sorry. Love that. Thank you. I'm Lori Weinstein, a professor at Westcon, and I live at 44 Concord Road in Danbury. Item 5. You're right. here on item 5. Item 5 on the agenda. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm here begging for money again, and I realize money is very short. Let me tell you what I'm asking for. I'm asking for $2,800 for the Danbury Historic Properties Commission. All of you should have received one of these items in your box. I can have a few copies, thanks to Attorney Ammon, who helped me uh, 
make some more copies so people need some more. This is a reimbursable grant that would be reimbursed to the federal government. Uh, the Historic Properties Commission came into being uh, probably in 2002 when we started to meet to the mayor about, about that. Uh, thanks to his efforts and the efforts of the staff. We now are at Lowest Pike Historic Properties Commission. I've been before the uh, Common Council many, many times before. It was a long and winding road, as Mr. Elton says, in terms of becoming um, the Historic Properties Commission. And, whoa, I'll stand back here. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, um, it's been a little frustrating on my point of view and from the commission because we're trying so hard.
Thank you. Do we have any other members of the public who suggest the council this evening? Ms. Garrett.
another site to see where almost 700 graduates uh, leave uh, the hallowed halls of DHS. There is a new time that I want to just mention to the council, to the residents and friends at home. Um, it is at 3 p.m. at the athletic office, not at, not at uh, 5, at 3. So it's been moved up by two hours. Um, June 25th at the Volunteer Firemen's Council Annual Fireworks Display in Canada Lake. Uh, it's at 9.30 again, it's a tremendous event. Uh, certainly we ask you to participate if you can. June 28th, the Major Youth Services uh, for Annual Butterfly Breakfast on the 29th um, is the Mayor's Cup Golf Tournament. And on June uh, 26th is our Lebanon American Day here in the city of Danbury. Uh, we're doing the flag raising at 1 uh, with the uh, Recognition Memorial Services. Um, and uh, then later we'll have a luncheon at the Lebanon American Club immediately following the flag raising and uh, recognition ceremony. So uh, those are by no means not a complete listing of all events that are happening in the city of Danbury, uh, but they are certainly uh, some that are happening. On June 28th, don't want to forget, it's Ben and Barbara Giannisi's wedding anniversary. Congratulations. I want to make sure I got that right. I got you. I got you back. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, that concludes the announcements for this evening. Uh, at this time, we'll move to our scheduled meeting and uh, entertain the minutes, please. Your Honor, can I return this on? Yes. Uh, the turn the motion at this time that we wait the reading of the minutes as all minutes have. All members have copies and copies are on file with the city of the system charge. Second. Well, Dave, second by Council of Mayor. Said, are there any changes, corrections, or releases to the minutes as presented? <coughs> Seeing none, then I'll try your minds and accept the minutes. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. I just have a motion carries the Mr. Majority Leader, can you have the consent calendar, please? Yes, Your Honor. The consent calendar for June 7, 2011, is read as follows. Number one, please communication approve the appointment of William J. Totten um, as a member of the Richter Park Authority with the term to expire June 1, 2014. Number two, receive the communication approve the appointment of Greg Caskill as a member of the Conservation Commission with the term to expire June 1, 2014. Number three, receive the communication approve the appointment of Natalie Ferrer as a member of the Commission on Aging with the term to expire June 1, 2014. Number four, receive the communication to approve the appointment of William J. Lewis as an alternate member of the Commission of Persons with Disabilities with a term to end to expire on June 1, 2014. Number six, receive the communication to accept the generous donation from the Connecticut Bass Federation Nation for a commemorative bench to be located at Candewit Town Park and send an appropriate letter of thanks. Number eight, receive the communication and approve the appropriations of $75,000 to the Ambulance Fund account number 50000.5338. Increased services responses uh, have also increased revenues, which will offset the additional expenditures to create a surplus for the Ambulance Fund this fiscal year. Number 10, receive the communication and approve the request for a tax collector for the listing of names and amounts of uncollectible taxes from 2001 motor vehicle list and transfer $284,149.07 to the suspended list. <coughs> Number 12, receive the communication to approve the request of the city purchasing agent for the disposal of surplus vehicles and equipment. Number 15, receive communication to approve the request of the Danbury Housing Partnership to donate uh, $1,500 to the center's farmers market to support and promote proper nutrition and health for local residents in Danbury. Number 18, receive the communication and adopt a resolution authorizing the Board of Education to the Superintendent of Schools to file a grant application with the related documents of the State Commissioner of Education to accept a grant for state reimbursement funding for the Danbury High School Window Replacement Project as well as reestablish school building committee as required. Number 19, <coughs> receive the communication and adopt a resolution that will allow the City of Danbury Public Works Department to accept funding from the State Department of Environmental Protection through the Law Equipment Exchange Fund grant program. The award amount $20,865 will be used to purchase new equipment for the DPW. The city is responsible for 20% of the award, or $4,173, for 
with the other 80% to be reimbursed by the state. Number 21, receive the communication <coughs> conveyance of land and sidewalk easements for MDD Realty LLC, 100 Federal Road, lot number K10072, along with the required documents and plans suggested by the Corporation Council, Planning Commission, and City Engineer. Number 22, receive the communication and take no action on the water extension Fairlawn Avenue Project 10-19. Number 23, receive the communication and take no action on the sanitary, sanitary sewer extension of Shannon Ridge Road, Burton Avenue, Edgewood Street, Project Number 1019. That, sir, is the consent comment. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gray and his staff. Thank you, Ryan. I'd like to make a motion to accept the consent calendar as presented. Second. They have second by Mr. Perkins. Any discussion about the consent calendar? Seeing none, then I'll try to remind some acceptance. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, that would mean uh, we, uh, items one through four on consent. Uh, Madam Clerk, item five, please. Communication request for serving historic properties commission. Members of the city council, I am. I am What's your question? No, that's fine. Just what is your counsel? Ms. Geisel? Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to refresh to an ad hoc consisting of a representative from the mayor's office and the director of finance. The ad hoc committee shall consist of the following Councilman Deep Dimitri, <coughs> uh, Councilman Geisel, and Councilman Shanice. Item 6 was consent. Madam Clerk, item 7. <coughs> To the budget transfer. To Armour Mountain from David St. Clair. Attach the listing of budget transfers necessary to close the fiscal year. I respectfully request that these transfers be added to the council's June agenda for their approval. Please feel free to contact me should you require any additional information. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. Which question, Mr. Collins? Your Honor, thank you. At this time, I'd like to make a motion that we receive the communication on the budget transfers and approve them as presented by David Sinclair, the Director of Finance. Second. So made second by Mr. Sinclair. Uh, discussion about uh, the, the transfer requests. Uh, Mr. Chase. Another <laughs> shot. Any questions to David Sinclair? Say hello, please. Uh, and we sat here, we sat down for about a half hour, 45 minutes, and we went and a lot of these items that would be transferred to um, line items. And unfortunately, we're not able to communicate our discussion to a lot of our council members. <coughs> Can you just give a brief summary, you know, about 10, 15 minutes summary, to go over the line items? Oh, yeah. I mean, well, go over the line items that, for items that were not in the original budget. So we can get a feel of what, what's being transferred. I think the question is, Mr. St. what are we doing? Just explain what oh. the bottom line is this. Uh, typically, uh, most of these transfers will typically go uh, to the mayor. We would sign off on it if they're along the, just within the department. But some of these transfers are uh, in the divisions. And that's the decision that they want. Well, it's just a first feeding back. So the distinction on this is, is that we're moving money in between the budgets, and that requires council approval. So rather than have two separate lists, I decided to, uh, in which could lead to further confusion, decided that one list that uh, would go before the council. And that's the overall uh, uh, issue here. So what, what we have here is a bunch of changes that typically uh, would just go through the normal process that we have every year and every month. But the difference, uh, some changes at year end was very tight. We had to make some moves in between the division. This is an incredibly tight year. Normally we don't have to make any moves in between the divisions. And that's why you haven't seen this in the past. So if you, if you want, um, you know, without 
I'm not going to go through every line because I think that would take a lot longer. Why don't you give us an example of one line? The example is the assessor's office. Within the budget, um, you know, they didn't have a certain position budgeted within the assessor's office. And in fact, that was in uh, the library. That amount or that uh, salary is being charged back to the assessor's office. We need to make that move, which happens to be from one uh, area of the budget into another. So that crosses divisions in the budget for gas and category. That requires council approval. Right, that, that would be a, one of those prime examples. Right, another example would be uh, some interest uh, on that F. That requires council approval right there. Um, you know, and some other areas, anytime we're moving uh, some money from all overall public works into, say, public safety or vice versa, that would require that. And what we did is we looked at whatever savings we might have had, and that's why you see a lot of salary type of accounts over time, uh, regular salary. We looked at that and we said, where do we need uh, some additional money as we project out to the year end? Some of that was in buildings. So you see some shifting into the buildings accounts. You know, whether it was from their fuel accounts or electricity accounts into maybe the maintenance accounts. Because we saw that we had some needs, as, as the mayor mentioned earlier. Uh, one of the buildings does not have air conditioning. Uh, and that, that's become a, a pretty pretty important need. And I can't remember which one it was. Thank you and the old library. So, you know, we, we've been delaying those things over the last few years, and now it's a critical need. And so we're, we have to make those kind of shifts within this budget. But we couldn't stay within, uh, you know, the, the categories that we typically look at. So we looked at this in one big journal entry, if you will. Uh, and that's why we, we brought this before. Instead of just separating, this is for the mayor, this is for the council, we said they would just bring it all before the council and, and see how the sausage is made. Further discussion about the transfers, Mr. Sadler. Thank you, Your Honor. So, uh, through the chair uh, to Mr. Sandler. So, for example, if you look at the bottom of page one, police department regular salaries. We're transferring from that line item approximately 439,000. Of, of that amount, I know it's going other places, but of that amount, three, approximately 311,000 is going to overtime salaries within the police department. That's correct? If you, if you look at the personnel salary savings, traditionally the police would look at that as kind of one line together because it's kind of an offset together. But together, they're about uh, $60,000 or $50,000 over. So net, net, we had to, to make some adjustment there for about $50,000. Well, that's what I'm getting to, is that that type of transfer of air wouldn't have come before us. That's why this look, so this list looks hugely expensive compared right. to previous years, like we're doing in a vast amount differently than we've done in the past. It's not necessarily the case, because we just have everything in front of us. So that very large transfer, at least on the balance sheet, would not have come before us in the past. Income statement. Income statement, sorry. I'm not going to count. Appreciate it. Provide a little more transparency. Yeah. That's exactly right. Thank you very much. Any other discussions? Seeing none, then I'll try to manage the transfers. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposition? Motion carries the MC item. The eight was consent as the third item the nine. Communication with Park and Authority requests for finance. Thank you. Honorable Mark Bentley, the Council, David St. Hilaire, Director of Finance. Attaches the request from the Parking Authority for permission from the City Council to finance 75000 for gate equipment at the Patriot Garage. I respectfully request that this item be brought on the June Council agenda for their consideration. Please feel free to contact me should you require any additional information. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. It's a pleasure, Council. Mr. Knapp. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to refer this to an ad hoc uh, consisting of the uh, parking authority, representative of the parking authority, representative of the mayor's office, director of finance, and corporation council. 
Okay, that actually consists of the following. Councilor Curran. Councilman Cola. And Councilman Genesee. Madam Clerk, item 10 was consent, item 11, please. Communication. Um, amendment of ordinance, section 18-24. Refusal to accept unwrapped coins. With pleasure, Council. Council Cole. Now I'd like to refer this to a public hearing and a meeting the whole. So no objection, it is so ordered. Item 12, second consent, Madam Clerk, item 13, please. Communication, uh, application for deferral of assessment increase from Paul Mitchell to the school. It's a pleasure, Council. Mr. Mayor, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to uh, refer this to Matt Hock, who is the Corporation Council, Director of Finance, Director of Planning, and the Tax Assessor. And I commission to consist the following Councilman Stanley, Councilman Trombetta, and Councilman Visconti. <laughs> Madam Clerk, out of 14, please. Communication deferral of assessment increase for Bells Lane. There's a pleasure, Council. Mr. Seabury. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to refer this to the Manhattan Committee, uh, consisting of Corporation Council with Director of Finance, Director of Planning, and the Tax Assessor. Manhattan Committee shall consist of following Councilman Trombetta in the chair, Councilman Stanley, and Councilman Visconti. Item uh, 15 was consent. Clerk, <laughs> item 16, please. Communication acceptance of City Wood Road, Spruce Mountain Trail. Pleasure, Council. Mr. Curran. Your Honor, I'd like to refer to an ILAP committee consisting of Corporation Council, City Engineer, Planning Commission, and Director of Public Works. Uh, I think it was just a straight referral, not an ad hoc clear. We meant straight referral, right? All right. Do you want to refer this to Corporation Council, Director of Public Works, City Engineer, Planning Commission reports? I think it's yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> referral to Director of Public Works, Corporation Council, City Engineer Planning for reports. See no objection is so ordered. Madam Clerk, item 17, please. Request for water and sewer, 66, 67, 68, Reynolds Road. Pleasure, Council. Mr. Stanley. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to make a motion to refer to City Engineering and Planning for reports. Motion may refer to City Engineering Planning for report. There's no objection to so order. 18 and 18 are consent. Madam Clerk, item 20. Resolution agreement for safety improvements at the intersection of Lake Avenue, Shannon Ridge Road, and Ridge Road. Thank you, Madam Clerk. What's your pleasure, Council? Mr. Cobble. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, I'd like to make a motion to receive the communication and uh, authorize the mayor to enter into the agreement for the safety improvements at the intersection of Lake Avenue, Shannon Ridge Road, Ridge Road, State Project Number 34-338. And I believe there's a resolution. And adopt the resolution. Motion made, seconded by Mr. Seabury. Discussion under uh, this item. Mr. Rodell. Well, thanks, Ron. I'll do the chair to Corey Tory, please. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Corey had a, uh, he has a graduation event tonight, so Mr. Harry Gold will be joining us. And that was purple shirt. That, that'll be uh, fine. Uh, I have a little map here, um, actually, for another item. And it shows fairly clearly the intersection of Shannon Ridge, which is opposite the bridge, where the light is supposed to go. And, uh, the, uh, the, the, old, the, the, new, the old highway of that for 84 for Cedar Street. And we know we're getting to a position where we're putting a couple of lights fairly close to each other. Uh, we've got a couple of issues like that in Danbury. Uh, West Worcester comes in my main street, West Worcester is going north on main. On to the left of West Worcester, you've got the light right at the courthouse of Walgreens. You shoot across just a few feet, you've got another light in that at no man's land. Then you go across, and obviously these lights have to be timed you know, perfectly to so be able to get through like being stuck in that box. Um, the issue with Shannon Ridge is that people coming out of Shannon Ridge out of Lake Avenue can't take a left hand turn uh, in the morning the evening. The issue that I have with the two lights is not so much blocking the box, but generally when the traffic gets heavy, 
uh, traffic will back up through Shannon Bridge. It'll actually back up past the point that Shannon Bridge is, and you know, there's nothing there now. But if there's only the light there, the traffic does back up. It seems to me you're going to be just as stuck as you were before. So if you time the lights so that not enough cars are able to back up at that light, in other words, I guess you have to make the red light shorter, the duration of the red light shorter, because you'll be able to back up to Shannon Bridge. It seems to me that's going to have some sort of effect on, on the traffic as well. Unlike, for instance, um, West uh, 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 Worcester Street in Maine, which is the left-hand turn dedicated only to taking that left, where you can, if you wanted to, back up to the elderly center, it would make a difference. We're talking about Lake Avenue uh, going in both directions, and it seems to me uh, whether you're coming out of Shannon or taking the left, or coming out of Bridge or taking the left, going in the opposite direction. And the AAA office building, which at some point is going to be fully rented and dumping cars out at the same time. We added the light, and I know we have a lot of accidents, and we need to do something with that intersection. It seems to me that, you know, careful what you wish for, this could be one of those situations where it actually uh, is, is kind of productive, and I'd just like to hear your thoughts on that. That's very wrong. I, um, I think I know what your question is. My thoughts. Well, my thoughts are, um, let me just say this, uh, the technology with light controllers, phasing the lights, timing is highly sophisticated and there are models on top of models that will be run by the uh, engineering company that will actually look at the placement of the lights, how to control it, how to phase it. Uh, they will not only look at the immediate area that you just spoke about, they'll actually look at uh, the potential of backing up traffic on the ramps, which is very critical. It's going to be a requirement that's going to be uh, uh, a requirement for us to look at by the State Department of Transportation. State Department of Transportation sees this as a great opportunity to eliminate uh, accidents uh, and congestion. Uh, and that's the reason why they uh, are so willing to give us this uh, money. Uh, this money is uh, uh, not easily obtainable, um, and, and when they see a project that fits uh, really the requirements of the grant, they jump on it, and they've done that with us. So uh, I like to just be hopeful and uh, not say it's not going to work before we actually put it up, uh, but I will take your comments into uh, consideration and uh, know that uh, there are several situations, not only in our city, but probably in every city that you go to that has this proximity of traffic lights uh, and this complicated an intersection and uh, it's, it's a manageable situation. You just have to make sure the engineers address all the issues. And as I said to you, once the traffic counts are done and they model it on a computer, they'll actually run the model to see what happens. And then we'll tweak it in the field. We'll be following. Oh okay. yeah. Well, you know, this isn't coming out of nowhere. We've been told in the past when we've requested lights that the light we requested is much too close. To an existing light. We hear this again. It's on a hill, we can't go on a hill, it's through a tunnel, or it's too close to an existing light. And now we hear that we're, you know, we're able to put these lights that close together. So this is for us, for me, uh, for someone who's requested lights on Worcester Heights and places like that, we, and have been told we can't put a light there, it's too close to an existing light. This is a little unusual for us. So that's yeah. hardly where the question's coming from. Yeah, well, just understand every light placement is really a unique situation in itself. There are no two placement of traffic lights that will uh, really duplicate themselves in theory and in application. So uh, I, I hear what you're saying, but uh, I think that's maybe a little way to look at it so you don't get so frustrated. But you guys are going to be on top of the problem as well. I'm so on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Thank you for the discussion. Ms. Dysels. Thank you, Your Honor. I live on Shannon Ridge, and this is fantastic. <laughs> we have to, um, all of the neighbors, we never come down to go out onto Lake Avenue. We go around the block and come out Long Crest. It's virtually impossible to get out of our street, whether you're taking a right, going straight, taking a left. It doesn't, it, it's very difficult. And also, Shannon Ridge is a huge cut through into the hack area. So, boy, I, I'm jazzed, I gotta say. Thank you. I'm gonna advocate for your award now. So Thanks, Dr. Uh, any other discussions related to this project? 
So you know that I'll try your mind. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposition? Motion uh, carries uh, unanimously. Um, items 21 to 23 were consent. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll do the department reports. Uh, that way the department has to go home with a uh, quick executive session as well as a minor add on. Uh, so at this time, Mr. Uh, President, department reports. Your Honor, at this time I'd like to make a motion that we will be reading the department reports. Does all members have copies? <coughs> final legislative persistence Second. Mr. Maiden, second by Mr. Negashev. Uh, discussion under the final reports. Discussion under the final reports. Mr. Simon. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, through you, um, to, the, to the Chief of Police and possibly Mr. Ayarola and maybe Mr. Palanzo as well. This relates to the HVAC system and maybe even Mr. Winter at the Gateway Police Department. I had some communications with uh, different staff people regarding this matter. I just want to know with the extremely hot weather coming up and humid weather coming up over the next several days, where that stands with regard to the original installer, I believe, trying to correct the problems with the HVAC system at the police department and what a tentative my understanding is there's no final deadline, but at least a tentative deadline may be before we would take further steps, which I won't obviously question legal issues on the floor of the session right now. Mr. <coughs> Joel? Sure. We, um, the heating and ventilating system at the police department is, uh, is, is very uh, sophisticated, it's very complicated. Um, we have been having some problems tweaking the system uh, for, for a little bit of time. We've had a manufacturer come in and look at the chiller. We've had a number of other specialty uh, consultants come in and look at it. There is a high level meeting tomorrow uh, in my office to go over uh, the next step. Um, although uh, the, the law department and uh, ourselves are prepared to go where we need to go and there's a tremendous amount of uh, uh, leftover money uh, that would rectify this, uh, we really feel that is something that could be done in a more uh, uh, cooperative. cooperative spirit. Uh, to, 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 and and uh, there's a lot of different trades involved, so we want to make sure that there's a cooperative spirit. Uh, I see a couple of uh, emails flying around with some uh, temperature readings. Let me just tell you, those temperature readings, whoever's passing those out, I have a sensor in every room. I can Computer, by a computer, I could determine what the temperature is. There was no temperature in any part of the building that was over 73 degrees. Uh, the other thing I want to mention to you is this chiller likes hot weather. It doesn't like these warm and cold, you know, little warm, little cold. It looks for some hot weather. So when we actually have some hot weather, it loves to prank. You understand uh, it's going to shut up tomorrow because you said that. I just want to ask you just played the major. He jinxed us. He jinxed He gave them a low view of the whole thing. No, uh, we've been trending it, and that's what we're finding is it's what we call the shoulder season, which is where you're really not warm, but you have to run the chill. During a very, very warm day, it actually works fine. Uh, but there are uh, probably about eight people looking at the performance of this chiller on a daily basis in the computer. And uh, we know exactly what's going on with it uh, at any time of the day. So, and then. Can I follow up, Your Honor? Um, again, with regard to time frame, you have a high level meeting with various parties tomorrow. Um, is it, if you don't have a time frame, I understand that. But just from a standpoint of a time frame to either correct the issue or you know, our remedies, common knowledge, there's a bond, a performance bond, I imagine, out there that you can do after a large, large retainer on the project. Large retainer. So we have remedies, but this has been going on for some time. I know we always want to work in a more cooperative way rather than attempt either litigate or pre-litigation steps. That's understandable in terms of money. But do we have at least an idea of a time frame when we're going to have to go in one direction or another? Well, yeah, let me just tell you. If we were to pull the plug today and say, let's go get a chiller. We can't go get a chiller today. It's the middle of summer. We ain't going to rip that chiller out of here. The police department's going to be out any cold air for probably a month and a half, two months. So it's something that we have to, we have until the fall to determine the solution, uh, pick out a chiller if we're going to replace it, or pick out a solution to fix an existing chiller. It might be a program, programming issue. 
So uh, we wouldn't be ripping this trailer out in the dead of summer. That's uh, the, the last thing we'd be doing. We'd be, this would be something that would be done in the early spring or uh, the late fall, when you're actually now looking for air conditioning. So time frame wise, uh, you know, we're, we're uh, as the season gets hotter, the chiller is going to be coming offline less. And then in the fall, we'll probably get into what I call the shoulder season again, where we might have these hiccups. Uh, but by the end of the fall, uh, we're going to have this thing either fixed or that chiller's out of there, we're going to have a brand new chiller. And we have remedies to do that. But legally, uh, we're sitting on a ton of money, retainage wise, and there's a big share of money. So we're in a perfect position. I, I just want to add that KDE is not walking, you know, they want to try to get this resolved. Uh, and, you know, if we could put the children in the world, and that would, and that would 100% forever fix the problem you do it. Um, but the fact that they are being uh, cooperative trying to come up with a, with a resolution, uh, because we got a moment to do that, people get to put a trigger on any final fix, and uh, we want to get an opportunity to do it. And um, Mr. Councilman, we have done a number of uh, uh, trial bases on different programming aspects and different <coughs> modifications for children. We're pretty much at the tail end of that process now. Uh, based on the manufacturer's recommendations. And that's something that we really owed a contractor and we really owed ourselves before we could go to a surety company and claim that we had the So you're basically exhausting the possible that's, solutions that's with the current system. That's correct. And then by this, the end of the summer, a decision is going to have to be made. That's correct. And we're basically making our own case by doing that. Thank you. Uh, Mr. O'Connor? Thank you, Ron. Mr. Wright, you're all just like to comment. Uh, thank you for the outstanding job that your, your department uh, Don't, don't encourage us. <laughs> well, i got to give credit where credit is due. On Star Road between San Pitt and Federal Road, Tony, you guys did a great job on that drainage problem over there. Uh, it's been a long time coming. That flooding problem is uh, taken care of. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Thank you, Mr. How would Chief, if I may ask a quick question? Sure. Chief Baker. If, with the, with the temperature problems that we've been having or not having, whatever, has there been any effect on the communications, uh, the equipment at all, uh, where that room is located? No, it's got a separate air conditioning unit that uh, has been working with. That one works? That one works. It's <laughs> 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 Thank you. All right, just continuing on that same uh, theme that the chair to on this try to roll up. Did I hear you correctly? Did you say at no point has any room in the police station gotten above 73? Was that the figure? Uh, I make a reference to an email that talked about some rooms that were over 73, which I know based on my computer program and sensors that we had in the room, that it was up around 73 from what my staff is telling me. That's correct. That's that's what I see. That doesn't mean the humidity didn't rise. It doesn't measure humidity. Right. Yeah, we we measure temperature. We don't we don't measure humidity. But temperature is a direct reflection of humidity. Yeah, yeah, I got I'm missing something. Seventy three would have been here. What's that? I'm sorry. I'm missing something. Seventy three. It's probably seventy eight in here right now. I mean. Well, it's it's about air movement. It's not only about temperature. It's about moving air. It's a complicated system. It's about humidity and, and things like that. So, so we don't have anything that is 90, 92, 90. Well, I, I wouldn't know because I'd have to do a, a basically a picture, of, uh, take a snapshot of, of each room at a specific time on a computer to determine what the temperature reading was. Uh, but we checked a couple of the rooms that we were getting some complaints on uh, because based it was a major concern. Based on email, it was a major concern that if those rooms were getting up to that temperature, right, so it was something you need. Really that's, right. that's correct. Yeah, we get right on our computer. Uh, this this the system that we have uh, reports every motor that's running, every uh, ventilation system that's running, every uh, you know open, closed mover, all that stuff is reported on computers. Right. Which not that really about the issue, but when we finish the boilers in the high school. Well, a very similar system. We'll be able to check in the rooms. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. 
Mr. Uh, just a comment on a question, Your Honor. Uh, just so we're clear, it doesn't seem to be belittling in, in, in response to Councilman uh, Rotello's comment. 73 is a very different 73 when it's very humid, when the air's not circulating, than a 73 in a dry temperature with circulating air. You got equipment that you're wearing in uniform, so I think you have to look at that on balance and understand you're doing what you can do and appreciate the, uh, the information regarding the time frame. Thank you. For uh, discussion with the Seeing none, I'll ask you acceptance. All those in favor accepting the department reports to signify by saying aye. Aye. All those signify by the same day. Uh, for the department heads, we're going to move into executive session, so I will need uh, Mr. St. Larry, Mr. Pinter, Mr. Shepard, PJ, uh, with the council's adults who are going to be sitting on an executive session. All right. And uh, everybody else, you want to discuss? Oh, uh,